Plus, there's no like save on T1 side. They've got heals, but you know, pisa save. palang trash to one again. It's gonna take no time, no time, my friend. Yeah, good start. luck, good luck, both teams. He does do, uh, mm. he can eventually, you know, kill a TB in Chrono. Absolutely, and we did hear in the beginning of that interview that we had as well that there Cuckoo was saying, hey, maybe I'm going to tell my team to come on over and gank 23 Savage to try and slow him <laughs> down. Puck, the perfect hero that fits that mold. Um, Cuckoo also said some other things that were really great. Yeah, he, uh, he, he flamed. I don't want to take anything Cuckoo says seriously. He was flaming his team. <laughs> exactly. He's like, yeah, I don't know how much kind of uh... suck. I'm good. They're bad. <laughs> Yeah, he's, that's why he last picks his hero. He's like, I'm the real carry. I'm going to last pick my hero. I love that. Yeah, and then he takes the Venge, um, you know, well known as a, as a super duper carry, uh, but can definitely make a lot of stuff happen. And we might even have a yeah. little bit of a battle going on here uh, over this bottom rune. We'll see if Hyde actually wants to go on in and contest this or not. Cuckoo Zephyr there in the area. I think the they let this begins. one go. Yeah. Too many T1 heroes. This, the Treant Venge lane, to me, seems quite strong. They've got a Hedris on Treant, but I like it against the Void. Like, the Treant Punch, it's not like these bursts, like, not like you're throwing nukes that he can just time walk off. Like, a Treant Punch with some minus armor from the wave, that hurts. And yeah, you can time walk away, but it's like, you know, it's going to be persistent damage that they can do with zero cooldown because it's just right click. So it does feel like it's a lane where the Void is going to be in for a rough time. And so many times when these Voids have come around, it's been, like, looked really bad it's been off the back of like a terrible laning stage and then what do you do with this guy you know you got a quelling blade you're gonna go and try and like time lock some creeps over in the jungle that feels real bad uh so need to have a good start and zephyr already starting out there uh with the headdress and branches gets the first deny super annoying to play against uh hopefully 23 savage will be able to find some farm for himself here because this is not going to be easy my, my favorite part of the draft, though, as, as vanilla as it is, is going to be this mid matchup. Makoto, as soon as the puck was picked, like, they just, like, I feel like Makoto just turned to Captain and was like, pick me Ember. Because they first phase that Ember in response to the puck. So that's like Makoto laying down the gauntlet. He has been so impressive on the mid lane, whereas Carl, I feel, has been a bit shaky this tour. So I'm very excited to see who gets the better of this mid lane. And it's a matchup that can go either way. A ton of skill potential. He's spamming out the wave already with Carl. Uh, and if you make one wrong move, a little bit of a misclick, suddenly things can go pretty badly. Uh, up on the top side, though, also DP, you were talking about this in the draft while we were uh, waiting to come onto the panel. And you're saying that this is something that KP's just like looked super solid on uh, throughout this tournament. That's yeah, I, I, it gives him this hero just to play around. Like usually the lane itself is like a bit of a farm trade but once you hit you know offlane dp you, you know what you're gonna get it's this tower taker with exorcism like around you know minute 10 with a siege wagon usually your first exorcism you get the offlane tower you're next you get the mid tier one tower you're playing on radiant side so you've got the roshan advantage so that's something i think talon very much had in mind when picking death prophet is like we want heroes that can take roshan shaman got actually mm. banned against them so you know the roche taking options were limited Right, and that was something that they used to great effect in their series uh, earlier last week as well. As up top lane, Gabby gonna take a couple of punches there. The reflection for the turnaround and get some pretty good damage. Still hanging on to the fairy fire, Gabby will be able to walk that one off no problem. Um, but yeah, a little bit of danger uh, already in the early goings up top. Yeah, um, Death Prophet not getting that much CS. Actually, only the seven last hits TB with 10 6, but. Uh, down bottom, yeah, Talon also struggling on the Void. So the two side lanes for Talon not farming all too well. This is kind of how I expected bottom lane to go. I think that Treant Venge just have so much right-clicking power, and Treant makes it hard to get those last hits. But top lane, Q, he's committing oh my on And down low, Q, barely able to walk out of there, has the salve, and That's will okay. be able to make the escape. So Ooh. super close to first blood, uh, but nothing gained. Yeah. This is... You know, the power of Warlock, just constant sustain in this safe lane. White one's behind them here. Should be okay. Uh, yeah, this is not where a Warlock usually wants to walk around at. You can <laughs> very easily just get destroyed. Um, only 300 movement speed, not a whole heck of a lot of survivability. But we'll be able to walk that one off and then start throwing the heals onto Gabby again. And this has really been the feature that we've Dark seen for why this hero gets picked. Fortified. You can't kill the carry. Warlock will get him back up to full pretty quick. Yep. <laughs> Nothing much they can do against Gabby until they get some more levels here. 
And until, you know, the mid laners start making their moves, which is not going to happen until at least level 6, and usually not even level 6, but you want some power runes. Uh, you want to get to that point where you can rotate with a power rune, give the support the mid lane, uh, and then make your players either an Ember or a Puck. And one of the things is the Ember going for this Flame Guard Slight build is not going to have the Searing Chains to make those rotations as easily. I mean, he can hmm. Slight Spam and get kills, oh. but it's just not quite as effective. Look at this oh, play by this. Carl. Yeah. That was nice. Now gets the double rune. Very nifty. Yeah, we've seen, we see this every now and then, and whenever it happens, it's like, it's a bit of an outplay. Yeah. Especially for a matchup which is Ember favored to get the double rune there. You Because the issue is, Puck just gets out harassed with the Slide of Fist Spam, particularly with the Blightstone. Oh, Gabby forces a TP out from Q there at top. But uh, yeah, so getting double rune kind of salvages this lane a bit for Carl. He's still getting bullied. He may just have to make a base trip. I think he's going to farm this lane and just walk home. At least he's considering yeah. Carl. What's... I, he's, yeah, he has to walk home, surely. He's thinking about trying he's... to steal these creeps. I mean, it's, it, this is yeah. this is ultimate greed right here. He has wand charges where he can throw an orb, but it is what? deadly to stick around right now. What's coming out? He's going to salve? No, he's going to... Chain mail is that his, I guess. Radiant Carl. Well, they glyph there for a moment and actually gonna jaunt to the far Great. side. So now he doesn't even have a TP or anything. He's gonna have to make the run oh. for the bounty rune. Maybe that's why he didn't walk home. I don't know. Oh, he's trying to. S oh, that's a dire scan. Oh, he's good. Okay, so it's got the bounty rune. Yeah. Oh, he t oh, he uses TP to get the double rune. Yeah. I guess that's the cost of it. Top lane Q gonna get the kill on one. So there's first blood, but you know, I mean, first blood obviously impactful. And some regression right. down bottom as well. Can they finish him off? Doesn't look like it. They're going to be able to walk this one away. But yeah, like you talk about, the, the cost of using that TP for the double rune means that he kind of gets uh, forced yeah. to stay in this lane. He's still doing okay. Because oh. this, again, this is Ember's Zephyr? favorite. And there's... Down bottom. Okay. It's brought down by 23 Savage. So the That's lane, after the some levels, starting to look a little bit or better for Talon here. Oh, Puck gonna TP bottom. He got the bottle refill mid from the wall up. He's gonna take over the lane, and Puck is going for an early rotation. Coil tries to dodge the game. It's gonna happen. Cuckoo made the for it. He's like, he told him. He warned. 23 Savage should have watched the interview. He's like, I'm coming for you, 23 Savage. We're gonna get you this game. They knew. They knew what was happening. Former carry playing with the yeah. team make sure that they show them down whenever possible but they do bring multiple heroes mid now like three heroes mid for talon and they're gonna try and get a good oh. chunk of damage onto this tower great rotation they have got the siege wagon puck can't tp back he has to walk back to lane they may come close yeah. to bringing this down mm. but Q. maybe just not quite enough damage here they're not going to want to tank with heroes i mean hide is hanging out yeah. for a little bit longer yeah, and that, it looks like finally okay. they are going to get the catapult yes. done. Makoto's still behind the tower. It's still... Re Usually this tower doesn't drop until, like, second exorcism. Like, first one takes top tower, second takes mid. With that said, KP's lane is going pretty poorly. So I, it, they haven't actually pushed Gabby out of this lane at all. So Makoto's rotating top, which oh, is, I think, what oh. needs to happen. Remnant in. Can they Thunder. get him? Yes. They bring in one hero and get the kill. And KP living on that super low HP as well. That was such a key rotation. Like, uh, the fact Gabby was still in this lane at seven minutes was a bit of a surprise to me, even though th the lane started really well. I just think that threat of a, you know, a spirit rotation should always usually mean it by seven minutes, the carry should be in the jungle because he can't stay in lane against a mobile mid hero with runes and whatnot so i think gabby maybe stays a bit long he's going to tp back in maybe just knowing that some of these you know cooldowns are up ember is back mid but uh it's it's definitely a risky lane i think for gabby to stick around it and i mean this is the other problem kind of is that like we were talking about how you were supposed to be able to like have a decent time up top here potentially um that the lane against the faceless void was supposed to go well now you look at the top cores and uh both of the side lanes for talon are actually looking fairly decent and it's the terror blade that's really uh you know maybe gonna struggle here if they keep Radiance bringing heroes multiple times to them might Von will drop down a ward back behind the tree line and kp he's just gonna run on in yeah do they know he's here? Oh, he's keeping out. Yeah, it doesn't look like <laughs> yeah. find him. Yeah, this is the, you know, typical Death Prophet stuff. Just maybe, I mean, it's happening about when you would expect. And the key thing is Ember just got a rune. He got a double damage rune. It was the 50-50 rune split. Carl went bottom, he went top. And a double damage on Ember with level 4 Slight and the Blightstone, that hurts. Nobody's defending this top T1 tower. They're going to throw Dyer's the living armor. Tower. That'll it's delay it, but 
if anything, you're looking for a trade here. And, or a kill on Savage. Savage should not be able to get away farming alone down bottom at this point. Well, and actually, KP runs now out of the Exorcism. So they use the Living Armor, they use Exo, and they aren't still taking the tower yet. It looks like they are going to finally finish this. Makoto does pop that DD for it. Yeah, I think getting Ember to use this DD is honestly, like, a decent trade. Like, that DD is scary. You do not want to fight into it. And now, like, I'm sure when they see Ember pop DD, the communication is he's used DD. Like, if we take a fight, like, 30 seconds from now, that DD will have worn off. So, you know, we can maybe force force some action. But at the same time, I don't know if they want to. No level 6 on Warlock. Their team fight's just, it's lackluster. Um, if anything, it's, it's Talon who are the ones who are going to be trying to force some team fights. On. In fact, they do have that Chronosphere. He's sitting mid right now. Makoto will run into Gabby, jump forward, slight. That last remnant of the DD almost enough. They're trying to dodge the Sunder. Yeah. And it looks like Makoto isn't going to tempt fate anymore, but that's still just slowing down Gabby's farm. And that all happens because of that coil. Like, the, the only reason 23 Savage can position there is because coil is down. Uh, a puck side, that was a level 3 silence, no magic missile. That's, you know, it was a good chunk of damage, got him down to like 200 health, but they just didn't have that follow up lockdown or disable. They needed the dream coil, or they needed a warlock level 6. Like, the supports were a bit under level. Um, or I think, I don't know if Train had hit level 6 yet with the tome yet. They hadn't, maybe hadn't come out. So they just didn't quite have the damage. Uh, and 23 Savage knew it, so just really heads up play from him. Talon, they're just crushing this early game. There's no answer to their tower pull. Looking really good. And there we go. Rebound. Everybody jumps away to million movement speed because that's fair. And, uh, you know, now they have to back out <laughs> away again. Zephyr thought about throwing out that nature's grasp, but doesn't go for it. So you look across the entire map and Talon are farming all three lanes. They're farming dire jungle. I just feel like they're getting way more out of the map right now. 3k gold lead for him. Yeah. That's, I, I mean, if you're telling that's good news because this Gabby TB was something they picked in their last three games against SMG was was ultimately the big late game carry. So if it goes late game on even footing, it's TB favored. Mm. Gabby is brought down very low while in the jungle. Q will find the tree. Throws out the magic missile. KP is still playing around that way. Q just gives the rebound and then dies. That was interesting. Rebound it in. Okay. I thought it would be him. <laughs> yeah. Didn't Maybe even try and the way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> no. Marcy, new heroes. Still learning. <laughs> sure. No, maybe uh, he was saying anyways. I'm not sure. But uh, another power rune going the way of Talon. Because of all these towers being pushed and these lanes being pushed out, like, these power runes just represent, like, pressure on the map because it just means Talon have to play defensively. They're, and they're communicating. Every time Ember gets one of these runes, they're they're probably saying, like, you know, as soon as they see it, like, you know, Ember's got this rune. Like, we can't play aggressive or he's going to TP in and just, just like, a haste Ember is just going to get slide off to slide off and be unkillable. So, hmm. uh, T1 have to play defensive. That's what their draft is kind of designed to do. They're protecting their ancients, farming triangle, and unfortunately losing supports. Who are just, you know, doing their job. Just scouting out aggression as a support. You're going to put your body on the line to try and secure some farm at this point. Right, and this farm is a triple ancient stack right now that's being taken with a meta Terra Blade. So getting some uh, farm going while they're losing heroes, but uh, as you said, still losing those heroes, not great. 
Um, although, likewise, Talon, I mean, the next objective is a little bit unclear at this point. You can try and maybe pressure a little bit for tier two top. Would love, obviously, to get a Roche. That's where previously they had that, like, power from the Shaman and yeah. just dropping wards for it. Mm -hmm. um, not going to be the case this time as Q does have rebound available. Actually, Q down super low. They will jaunt out. Cuckoo's still chasing for this one, but they won't be able to find anybody. They're pinging Makoto, but he still doesn't have Searing Chains. Um, oh my you know, god. Fair enough, I guess. But against a puck, like, they don't really have... It's funny, because it's almost like the threat of a Searing Chains. Like, maybe they don't quite realize his skill build. Obviously, they know he maxed Slight, but they maybe don't quite know how many points he got in the Flame Guard. Swap in. Swap. On the high, trying to get the D Ward the action D -ward. going. And we'll get Overgrowth, and now they bring him down. Also, KP in some trouble. Drop the Golem, why don't they? Everything laid down onto Talon, and they get two quick kills. Not bad for T1. A lot of big ultimates, so it's I totally agree. Not bad for T1, but the question is what happens now? Because Talon, they're going to fight back, whether that's just taking a Roshan probably for free with no overgrowth plus chaotic offering. Like, how do you contest a Roshan with Exorcism? Um, outside of Exorcism, they don't have the best Rosh taking, but Exorcism alone should be enough. So we'll see what Talon do, because theoretically they should have full control of the game right for the next, like, two minutes while these ultimates are down. Mm. Koto finally gets Searing Change, uses them now on the Golem, who will deny, deny the Bounty <laughs> Rune. Uh, they do finally get the gold for that one, and the second Bounty Rune will spawn, but still, it hurts a little bit there. Um, 20 seconds until Exorcism, and Metamorphosis is back up, but as you said, those other control spells being lacking makes that one a little bit tough to come and contest. Popping the unleashed on Roche. Yeah. That shows how valuable this ultimate is on a support Marcy. <laughs> uh, I think they'll have. Uh, maybe they. Yeah, they don't need Exo, it looks like. They're killing Roche pretty fast without. And yeah, there's, nice. there's nothing T1 can do about this. It's. Which is honestly. I mean, again, I think both teams are getting what they want right now. For T1, it's use our ultimates to win a good fight and then passively farm. For Talon, it's like, okay, ultimates are down. Get as much on the map as possible. Take Roshan, take objectives, put ourselves in the driver's seat. So uh, it's going to come down to what Talon can get with this Aegis, particularly when T1 have ultimates back up. Right, and that is, uh, at least for now, the job for T1 is just split push. Pressure out all these towers. It does look like down bottom, Gabby trying to get some pressure onto this tier one uh, with the catapult here. And they should finally get it now. Um, also a mechanism done for Dawnbreaker. So they're very much hitting these timings. And I'm pretty sure that Makoto has gotten every rune. Um, this Ember pick has worked out fabulously for Talon so far. And it really has. Like, just the ability to put pressure on the map and Ember is just having a pretty free game. I'm curious. I, I love the mech pickup because it does feel like T1's way into this game is the big team fight. Like the Overgrowth, the Warlock Rock, the Puck. And the way to play into that is just having, Radiance like, you know, mechs, pipes, wraith packs. So hide going for a mech to me, yeah, makes a ton of sense when you're up against this big AoE team fight. Well, smoke up Radiance now. Makoto. Underneath that one, we'll run into a couple here. Cuckoo has the Aghanims being delivered right away. Q's going to catch him. His oh. courier is getting close. Will be delivered now. As the overgrowth comes out, Zephyr dies. And I think that just about ends the fight. I don't know. I mean, I guess they have over. Uh, they have Warlock ulti, but scary. Hard to fight into this. Yeah. Yeah. The big, the big thing with Vengex to me is always don't commit too much to kill Venge. Like, Venge with buyback, it's like you've got four lives. Uh, Venge without buyback, I mean, it's it's still the double life, and it just doesn't feel valuable to kill a Venge um, in a team fight. In like a pickoff sense, sure, but the way you lose a fight if you're Talon is by over committing too many spells on Avenge and then getting counterplayed by this big team fight. So mm -hmm. Cuckoo's going to be dangling himself in what looks like bad positions to try and basically feed away his life to win a team fight. Right. Or uh, alternatively, if there's a good Chronosphere, can come on in and save uh, the TB at that point. This is another option, but um, we'll, we'll have to see if they go for it. But uh, it doesn't feel like T1 want to take that fight anytime soon. It is definitely the uh, the chill zone for the moment. Um, although, yeah. Makoto will run into Cuckoo there and then just walk away, go back to farming. Yeah, it's definitely nice because it, it doesn't feel like there's any easy chrono targets because if Venge frontlines, it, you know, Venge Axe is kind of like a Wraith King where it's like, you know, you've got the yeah. multiple lives. You don't want to chrono a Venge. TB, if he frontlines, you don't want to chrono TB because he'll get swapped out. So 
basically chrono is not a spell that will typically start a fight it's going to be something used after you know midway towards a, in the fight or even after all the swaps and stuff are being used or or on the back lines like if anything someone like a puck becomes a good a good target if vent yeah. swap is down radiance top tower is under attack. Well, a hastron for makoto and Talon, how much time left on this Aegis? They've still got two minutes. We'll see if they want to get something done with it um, or if they're confident just continuing to farm. But actually, T1 are the ones that are going to smoke up now. Yeah. They and... seem to have a, a read on where Talon are and that they're, they're passively farming, so they want to find some kills. Ooh, they won't range. be able to quite catch them there. Just barely yeah. away. I like this Aether Lens that Cuckoo has queued up. It's just works so well with the hero with the swaps as well as the magic missile everything cuckoo wants to do this item i feel like just amplifies it yeah shard eventually as well if that's a opportunity for him if he wants to go yeah. for that one i like be it really good um but for now at least they'll back on out again t1 still comfy just sitting back and farming uh, I think yeah. that this is going to be two holy Daya's lockets eventually. Not sure if Whitemon's going for it or not, but Zephyr's already finished his. So oh, lots nice. of heal. in the dire. Oh, jeez, yeah. Heals galore. And, you know, it, it's a 3k gold lead for, for Talon, but when you look at the net worth, there's the one hero on top. It's Gabby's TB. Mm. And it's like, can they actually kill a TB in late game? They don't have crazy magic burst and... Oh. Oh, they're committing a lot here. onto this bench. Swap yeah. out at the start. And a little bit of a heal coming in. Will it get turned into an illusion? Do they go all the way in for round two of this? It looks like they will. And yeah, Cuckoo, no way out. Dies twice. Got a Kurin's way out, but that, that that's fine. Going on the bench when you make like you see enough heroes out from the map that they suddenly recognize cuckoo was a little bit too far alone utilizing the marcy with the dispos just the blink initiation doesn't even have the aether lens yet on q so that's going to give him even better uh cast range for his initiation uh and you know they waited till the end of the ages but it looks like they'll get this bottom tier one tower plus the venge kill kind of a slow passive farming game for both teams and the big question is just like what they build towards because these you know not even mid game like late game team fights is going to be where where things get decided here right yeah definitely um and you know that's going to be at least for now uh fairly open i mean t1 i i don't feel like they're that uncomfortable with the state of the game and how they've been moving um yeah. the only thing is like if gabby continues to not die that often things will be looking good for him they did a couple wave cuts down bottom um and bkb now done on the faceless void There's hasn't had to use it hasn't missing. had to show up to a fight yet it's yep. just been all makoto uh getting things done i want to fight i feel like if they want to force this fight they need gabby nearby he's there like he hasn't got the scotty yet but it, you know you've got so much farm in this tp like a big team fight i feel like needs to involve him at this point and the big thing, I, this gold lead is just ultimately misleading. Um, it's right. one of those things, you know, we'll talk about a lot, but players, like, they, they always feel like, you know, even when they're down in goal, like, you'll talk to these players in interviews and be like, oh, we never felt like we were losing. But, like, even just looking at the goal, it's pretty much just the support. It's like, the support net yeah. worth different is, like, 4 or 5k <clears throat> gold. So, and part of that, there's a Philosopher's Stone on the Radiant, whereas, unfortunately, for T1, they did not get one. But, um, you know, so how much can these supports do with farm then becomes a question. I'd say with Q's Marcy, it's it's quite a lot. Blink Aether Lens, very impactful. Mm. Uh, but, you know, there's there's only so much a Dawnbreaker can do with farm as a support. Right. Um, oh, wait a minute. Cuckoo? Could be the fight Caught for T1. Again. They have Yo they Carl there with the save. Do they At turn least it? for the moment, they drop the coil. Tries to go. That's a pretty good fatal bonds onto several, but they're not going to decide to drop the golem. So they just give up the life of Cuckoo and then back out. Not feeling like it was somewhere they wanted to take the fight. I think it looked mm. like, I mean, I guess Puck just dropped the call and they, they didn't have quite the fall they wanted. Fighting from low ground up to high ground. Like they had the vision on the cliff, but it wasn't quite near enough maybe to fight under. Yeah. And also maybe, maybe again, like I mentioned earlier, like they're making these calls with Ember has every single fight. He seems to have a power rune. He had an arcane rune there. Um, just having rune scan. control in for these team fights can make such a big difference for a hero like Ember who gets so much value from an arcane rune. And I guess that's the thing, like, if they just do these couple little pot shots here, this is where the tree does start to look pretty good, too, because you're not really losing that much damage on your towers. You've got the potential to turn things around. They can wait for that perfect fight, and they don't lose much. They just keep getting stronger. Um, 
I mean, obviously the Philosopher's Stone kind of hurts in a way, but I, I think that like you also have a couple of heroes that do a ton without a ton of farm with the Warlock, with the Venge. These are still yeah. high impact heroes in the late game. Yeah, there's not really any item that changes Warlock's impact on this game. The Glimmer is nice and all, but it's it's very minor as far as changing how your game plays out. Zephyr's Blink Dagger, I think that's a pretty big one, particularly against BKB cores. Um, but, you know, for now, for now yeah, they, they're, they're, they probably don't even know they're behind. I'm sure Gabby's just saying, like, guys, I'm really farmed. If this game continues at this pace, like, how do they kill me? I've got Avenge who can just sit behind me and swap me out. Or, you know, right. if, if Avenge is frontlining, then they're ignoring me. So uh, I think Gabby is set up to carry this game, which is very fitting considering, you know, T1 <laughs> versus Talon, the drama with these, the carry players on this team, 23 Savage being kicked. Gabby, you know, with some of the comments he's made in the past, like this is a spicy one. And this game one is going to come down to the carries. It is very fitting. Um, who was right? Who was left? It'll all be decided here. All the memes. Oh, and it might start soon, actually. Be careful now. So they're a little late they're for the run. into the pit. I mean, uh, it's always that big question. You know, you see that the exorcism is used. You see that there's an opportunity where they're all grouped together, but yeah. decide to wait for the big battle later. That one is a little bit nicer now. You do get the uh, shard, which I think was given over to uh, 23 Savage. So he's getting very, yeah. very farmed, getting towards that uh, satanic next. Definitely a nice shard. And as a carry, you don't want to buy it this early on, usually just because it's like 1400 gold. It's not really like suited to carrying, but like being able to time walk in, time walk back out, like, whoa, oh, swap in mid. Big swap. Just, Finds high, it's stunned afterwards. And Castor, he's just gone. Yeah. Just quick and easy pick off. I think they saw KP up top. They also know there's no exorcism. So it's one of those things where often these death proper teams will use Exo to take Rotan. But then for the next minute, they actually lose ground while having Aegis because the opponents know Exo's down. So. T1 mid tower and a, a pickoff. That's Radiant honestly really nicely done by fallen. by T1. Uh, this game still feels like it's at this very kind of even stalemate almost. Talon with a, you know, obviously tactical advantage. They're the ones kind of controlling the tempo a bit more. They've got an Aegis. Uh, but again, I don't feel like T1 are going to feel like their position is bad by any means. If they lose oh. Carl, then maybe yeah. they're a little worried. That time dilation. You get caught Ooh. by that. It's a rare form of control that really hurts Puck a lot. Yeah. So a nice little catch there. I was going to say right after he dies, I think he needs a Lincoln's. And he, yeah, I think he queued it up after he dies. Playing into the Marcy, like Lincoln's just becomes, to me, a, a must buy item on like a, a hero like a Puck this game. Or he needs an A on this, one of the two. Yeah. Well, they do manage to uh, find right there a, uh, a nice pickoff. And now heading on in, trying to take down this tower. Tree will keep it alive as long as possible. Gotta be careful. This tree may... Yeah. They're uh, gunning for him. Okay. He just Ooh. walks away. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. he knew what he oh, he gets Ooh. caught. Nope. Never mind. He didn't know. He gets caught and killed off. So Zephyr goes down again. Oh, honestly, that was super incredible by Makoto. Like knowing he having the sense to know he was still there. Often you would slight the scouting, but he didn't just slight. He hit the searing chain as well. Right. Like going for the full combo blindly in the trees there. Super heads up. Are fortified. And they force out the Glyph, but this is going to eventually still fall. So, Tree not able to keep it alive anymore towards mid, though. They find Hyde. Cuckoo, Carl, the heal. Trying to keep him alive and dodge out of this one, but eventually breaks the coil. And can they find a pickoff? That doesn't look like it. Yeah, they saw Ember go bottom, but yeah, obviously the assumption is, yeah, he did leave a Fire Remnant behind, but Makoto a bit low on mana. He needs... A rune or something here it looks like it just isn't available to him so nice fine by by t1 this is the big thing they have to do when aegis is up is just keep sending these tb illusions bottom force rotations bottom. like yeah ember's a decent hero to deal with the split push because you can always remnant back in but you just gotta you know keep ember honest keep the pressure up on the map and just try and you know it's kind of like turtling it up a little bit but you can't turtle in your base you need to actually be aggressive by you know pushing out both bottom and mid lane. Radiant's bottom right. tower well, and, and we are starting to see maybe a little bit of a problem here. Uh, you know, as much as we're talking about how good this looks for Gabby in the late game, Carl is definitely falling behind slightly. His, uh, his other opponent yeah. in Makoto, who is starting to build up a little bit of advantage, already has the Lincoln Sphere. Cuckoo, they break the Lincoln right there. Gonna commit everything now on to this Venge. Carl looks for a turnaround. Second round, couple batches, tries to throw out the stun. Is going to connect and now jumping back and forth. 
Cuckoo will manage to stay alive. Coil afterwards connecting oh. now. Trying to bring down 23 Savage. Is he going to get away? No. So that is Aegis down. Do they have round two of this though? Gabby going to stand right on top. Wants to chase. But it's a little bit dangerous. And without another coil, I don't think T1 have enough control. Yeah, they don't have the blink on tree. I think if they have the blink on tree, they can maybe go on 23 Savage there. Because if they force his BKB, then they blink overgrowth and TP kills him. But... This blink on tree, it's just about to come up. And he did end up getting the Philosopher's Stone. So Treant has one as well now. I think they mm. just got it a little bit later. So that's a very big item. But before we can get there, Talon, they've smoked up. They've got all their ultimates other than the, the Solar Guardian. They want to force a fight here. But Gabby, uh -oh. good map awareness. Yeah, scans also. And they saw Cuckoo. that that was coming their direction. Well, Cuckoo mid, but no follow-up. Marcy just with a blink disposed. But the rest of the team did not want to commit that deep. Yeah, they were going over for the Terrible Eight Illusions, I guess, but Radiant no such luck. So uh, again, <laughs> another round of Aegis, but not really any objectives yeah. taken. They took that top tier two tower, um, and that does open up the ability to come on in and take outposts. So that's going to be something to watch for. Makoto, White Mon, he's in biz there, gets found, rooted. Wants to jump away and the pull off to the side. Cuckoo oh, swapped swap them out that. afterwards. They got Kanek offering, but he needs to wait for the silence to wear off. Cuckoo low in some trouble uh, and getting healed back up. Barely <laughs> living through a jump in. And there's the dispose. Round two. The stun is there. They had to go all in for that one. BKB out from Gabby and now the chaotic offering. Where's the follow up? They don't have metamorphosis. So it just has to go toe to toe. Chrono. And the chrono's right on top of them. Overgrowth afterwards looking at for Ball Zephyr. Out. They walk back into the chrono after that one. Double kill for Savage. Cuckoo now has to run in the illusion form. No buyback because he can't get into this fight. Talon, they're just looking too strong. Coil? Oh, Coil, where's the follow up? I don't think they've got any. No, not at all. Carl does not have nearly enough damage. Yeah, and just rooted. Oh my god, jumps in. And he's low. Yule Scepter. Yes, he needs to run away. Yeah. And we've talked a lot about, like, T1 taking these fights and really, you know, playing well when Chrono and Exorcism were down. That's exactly what Talon just did. The big ultimate that isn't an ultimate is Metamorphosis. And Gabby without meta there just couldn't really dish out damage. You know, he got swapped out of the Chrono. I don't actually think he was going to die there. It was just a very chaotic situation where Cuckoo, you know, trying to do his job to save his buddy there, but swaps himself in and just in the end you know t1 do disengage lose a couple of supports along the way uh and unfortunately also again lose cuckoo who's kind of just being this kind of frontline sacrificial lamb to try and buy keep buying them time to kind of delay this game but they've got to fight with metamorphosis because with a meta there t1 clean up but the reason that fight happens is because talon know there's Radiant's no metamorphosis tower is under attack. right and uh, what's been a sort of odd decision to to go on in right there after so many good decisions about when to not fight uh it just seems very uh uncharacteristic from what we had seen before um as yeah. we do have a a little bit of a headset issue, and okay, okay. T1, they're going to need to figure out what's going on right here. Hey, Lobat, Lobat, yeah, the headset, like Lobat. And the way that things could change. I don't know if they're going to get more If they still fight with all their ultis and everything up for T1, do you think that they can still take it? Oh, absolutely. This game is 100% down to execution. I don't think this is one of those things where we've gone late game and it's like, okay, this team has an edge and should win now. I think the execution is easier for the side of Talon. Uh, just because, you know, spells like Chrono, what Ember brings to the table, Death Prophet can force objectives. Ang like, and they have the hero ng Talon. Ang ganda na sustain easier, nila. Whereas T1 have to use a lot more Maganda finesse naman with the T1. way they utilize the swap. You know, there's some cute plays they can May make with like Coil into swap to break it. The Treant with the Blink Overgrowth as a BKB counter. So, you know, it, it's it's definitely possible for T1. Just they've got to be really clean with their teamfight execution, which is something they're known for. T1, when it came to like, you know, they're getting results at TI and stuff, they were all about playing the 50, 60 minute late games, farming it up, Cuckoo playing greedy off. And habang na apos, thank you sa mga nag subscribe ng channel natin, Yo Bird Thon. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, Thon. And on the side of Talon, I mean, I guess the other thing that you have to be careful about is that you have one bad fight and it can all be okay, back around. Okay, 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 guys. This third Roche is going to start and stuff can start to happen. Okay, okay, okay. You lose the fight, leave the okay, fight, and suddenly you get a lucky Aghanim Scepter spawn. Um, it can all start looking really bad really quickly.
Yeah, I think the big thing for them is just keeping it keeping it clean, not forcing a roach when they don't need to. And so far, that's exactly what we've seen. Like, uh, like 23 Savage as well as Makoto have both played flawless games. Like, there's been one death between the two, and that was avoid dying because Puck at level 6 TP'd bottom, like in a very unexpected gank, which like, it, it's not even 23 Savage's fault he dies there. So the fact, you, honestly, Makoto's one of these players, like he'll have in the past, he's been known for, you know, winning his lane and being too aggressive and, you know, maybe throwing the game a bit. We have not seen that at all. His his Ember has been flawless so far. No, but up was, uh, well, it does look like uh, we have all players Stephen back Blanca. in the game. Hirap talaga sa late ng talon. Wala pa naman sila masyado sa ibulo. Take game Ember. Uh, take us up sa Jinky Fradeas. Um, and then finally get a couple of really good ones based off of some some strange stuff going on from T1. Um, and now, Yo, we'll thank you, thank you, Mom Jinky. Radejas, welcome, pa, welcome, Mom. Um. I think there's only one ward on the map. Oh, the right late game, no, no, barely into their TB triangle. Atcha, ay, TB. Uh, so these next couple of minutes, boy, start to look atcha, a little bit uh, Ember. Let's see, let's see. And continue the time, Matal. The way these two teams are playing this game. Gabby manages to take the bottom tier two tower after uh, you know big ulties are on cooldown, pressuring out the map, and T1 will retake this side of it. It's nice and get this outpost and really play around this bottom lane effectively now. Yeah, as they've been doing, they see high here. Swap, Swap in long range and in some trouble. Gabby doesn't want to pop metamorphosis, won't need to, and actually. All right, we're talking about all these things that are going great. For Let's Cal, go. And suddenly, they're up on their high ground. Uh, Chrono, 22 seconds. Makoto turned upon. Lincoln's broken. Carl, he's right there on top of it, too. They don't have TPs on these here. They're using them to get back now. Everybody's coming back in. 1023 Savage jumps for time dilation. Disarmed on Gabby. Yeah, this is very scary. Q, Q tried to find him. Disposes finally there afterwards. 22 Savage jumps in again, silence out from KP. And T1 have to let him disengage. Get out of there. Meta's wearing off slowly, and now Talon, they want to chase. They know Meta's only got 10 seconds left. They want to force this. Turn, swap, Savage jumps in. Where's the KP has Chrono available if they want to use it. Waiting on it, last second, gets it off. Makoto right on top of his goal, but the Overgrowth comes out. Now round two, the heal coming in afterwards. Enough for the kill on to TB. And it was a bold move from T1, but it does not pay off. Cuckoo is going to drop down to the south as well. And just like that, they will lose three. Maybe more, oh. Carl. In the oh, base, Carl. Can't quite get He's him. out. Okay, didn't have vision for the Yule Scepter. Great chase from Talon, just forcing the issue there. And I think T1 knew they're like, they're chasing him. We can't outrun them. The hero like Void will just keep chasing you down. So T1 got forced to basically, at some point, they're like, we just got to fight. We got to try go in this Void and kill him there. And I think. He, he kind of got swapped in and they didn't they were very late maybe on the overgrowth it looked like zephyr just couldn't get his blink overgrowth off in time to maybe help out against the void and that really mm. cost them the big issue is the void doesn't just have bkb so he pops bkb but he still has the satanic as an additional dispel as well so it just makes it so hard yeah the popping satanic for that and i guess that's maybe part of the reason that 23 savage is waiting for a little bit to, to pop the chrono so we can at least get some value out of the satanic too um all in all just a really solid fight from talon and you know while we've been saying that you know t1 are definitely still in it talon have not looked back once they have continued to control this game albeit being close earlier now it is pretty handedly in their favor at least for the moment but i uh, can't relax too much although roche is back up again we'll see if they try and take that right away yeah for T1, Metamorphosis will be back up, so they've got all their key spells if they want to make their move out on the map, but Roche will drop too fast. I don't think they're kind of in a position to get there in time. This is just... Honestly, I, so much goes back to Talon's approach to this game with the draft. Like, they very much designed a draft around playing Radiant. It's something teams are very wary of, like, which side you're playing on can influence, like, what heroes you pick. And playing on Radiant, you want to have these Roche takers if you can get them. Well, they ha now have an Aghanim Scepter on Void, and suddenly, by far, the most farmed hero in this game. Um, 6,000 gold ahead of the TB, and I am really struggling to see how they take a fight without being able to win it. I guess, like, we haven't really seen a great White Mon ulti in a little while on this Warlock. That could be an avenue to make something work. 
Carl's trying to cut some waves. There's still siege wagons, but just making it again, going back to trying to delay the game. Try and stop the push. They see Makoto bottom. He's alone, but not an easy oh, kill to get. Whitemon, right on top of him. Rooted. Breaks it. Trying to run Force away, them. and they Get realize, me. okay, we uh, we cannot do this anymore. Zephyr, I think, is just dead, and the rest of the heroes of Dire just need to run away. That was not the what they're hoping for. Yeah, I, I think it's okay for T1 though. They're they're in stalling mode, so supports okay. dying to like, you know, you pull them away from your side of the map, and they wanted to like, you know, push mid or something, and you pull them down bottom, and you also cut the waves like Puck caught the bottom creep wave, so. It's just this mid wave that Gabby has to adjust, so it's not not the end of the world, but Gabby's gonna be a little bit careful here. Yeah, lots of danger. A bottle DD now for Makoto. The runes nice. continuing to flow in for him, and he's almost at 25 also. Wait, going top. Ooh, he's looking for a Chronosphere. He's still hunting Carl? for Carl. They've made it corner. He gets rooted. Oh, they find him right on the edge. Triple remnant in. Might have been a fourth one on top of it, but Makoto cleans up with Carl. Very crisp, clean play. Makoto just making sure they get those catches. Even down bottom where he pops the BKB out of overgrowth, he remnanted away because he know he doesn't know where the backup is. And once his BKB is wearing off, he doesn't want to die. So not overextending. Talon really playing things very much with a lot of discipline here. And it, it feels like T1 on the back foot. They're in full high ground defense mode. And definitely an area where they can shine. You know, you can... Del Make it hard to push the towers with the, the living armor. You've got some big team fights to fall behind too. It's just this mm. Aegis that makes it really hard to go on Savage. Savage goes in right away. They already popped Metamorphosis, trying to find an avenue to go into this one. KP down low, going to die. Point three Savage now still standing right on top of him. Goes in for more, trying to take down Gabby. Has Sunder available, but the KP comes out in time. Swap out afterwards, but it's not enough. And he's under he gets pulled, he gets controlled, and he gets killed. Four dead, 24,000 gold lead, and Talon look to take game number one if nothing changes significantly in the next Ooh. little bit they got a creep wave <laughs> carl can't cut anymore what a fight like, they pag 1b 1c 23 sabi just kaya ano terror blade like he was just waiting for that blink dispose just to make sure that there was not a chance for him to get that thunder off and it's really been the story of these team fights just can he get a good thunder off and you know you don't just want to thunder your teammate or an enemy support you want to find that core Oh, he's still dilated. And no way out. He can't get out of there, surely. Dilated for blink. a couple more seconds, trying uh, to get out of there. They don't know which well, direction he blinked. He blinked okay. out to the south. All right, Carl. Okay. Staying in it. Oh, my God. Last one. No, last one. This <laughs> might not be the end. There's a lot of people in 23 Savage. Yeah. Hey, they, Gabby. They make it two lengths. I don't even know if they get a second lane. Four heroes will be alive. Galing din ang Ember, no? Ni Mikoto. Wala, may pinapa ita. May pinapa, ano talaga si, ano? Nagpapakilala si 23 Savage kay Gabby. Uh, sa, ta sa talon, ay sa T1 pala sa T1. Tara, tapos na yata ito, mga sir. Kunat na nung void, eh. May, may Aegis pa to, one minute. No. Jump forward, Cuckoo. They're dropping a lot of damage into him, and well, a second round of stun, but I don't know if it's gonna matter. Metamorphs is still on cool. Hey, gusto talaga ni 23 Savage kay Kuku, ah. Pinag-awa yun, no? In some ways, like, this is the ultimate issue you often see with... Oh my god! Carl, Carl, he just catches him! Oh, remnants in, slide up. Wala, wala, may pinapaano talaga si Savage. 23 Savage show he's that's a couple times now he's he's caught this pump. How many Sir Jonathan so I bag you? Tama ba sir? Uh, uh, uh boss Jonathan depend uh, uh, cool down dependent. Doom and despair. Oh, okay. No ages in spite. Warlock at saka sa trend no. Even so like there. Warlock trend. Ah uh, metamorphosis ng PB. It's all in on Gabby and I, I like there's yeah. so much. No, 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 Swap in. Swap in KP, not bad, but not enough. And now goes for the stun, hits onto the cuckoo illusion. About to come back to life in a second, but it's trouble. Not gonna happen. Thunder Savage does not quite have enough. Still, bloody mass under him. Dispose the punch. Ah, GG. Zephyr is dead. GG is gonna be called. Yes, Alan, no. Keep it looking pretty here. GG, mass under him. Yeah. 
And so that's good. Going the the Gabby TB and he would get low. I, that's when they would basically so bring out all the stuff to control. I felt like they would only go on the TB when they knew they had like.